Hi everybody, um, I'm Rachel Louise Brown. I'm the Acting Course Leader and Senior Lecturer of MA Commercial Photography. And in this presentation, I'll be taking you through the structure and aims of our 15 month master's program in commercial photography. And at the end, we'll have time for some questions. So if you feel a bit shy to ask questions now or questions come to you at a later date, I'm available via email and we'll give you my address at the end of the presentation. I'm also joined by Rosie Feather and Nikki Eberl, two outstanding and highly proactive members of our current 2022 to 2023 cohort, and they will be available to answer your questions during the Q&A section at the end. Nikki and Rosie are our current course reps as well, so they're really well versed in answering queries related to the course and also UAL in general. So, this course, MA Commercial Photography, began as a postgraduate diploma in photography and was evolved into a high level master's program last year. So we're currently going through the first year of the incarnation of this course as an MA program. It was realized whilst this was a postgraduate diploma that there was a gap within higher photographic education for a course at a postgraduate master's level, which underpins critical thinking, but has an emphasis on technical excellence and developing an understanding of how to market oneself and navigate a career within the industry a career that is financially viable. So while the course has a strong conceptual creative approach, equal emphasis is given to practical skills with technical workshops forming an important part of the syllabus, along with business and professional identity. So as I take you through this presentation, just to say that all the imagery that you see, including this one here by Shin Fen, has been shot by a current member of MA Commercial Photography, so from our current cohort, and all of the work that you see has been shot during the last two terms. So who studies MA commercial photography? You might want to build your technical skills. You might be somebody who wants to find your visual voice. You might want to develop an understanding of the industry and how the commercial sector works. You might also be looking to change career. So with all these points in mind, the types of profile of students that we are looking for are those who maybe have studied a BA in photography or a related field previously. You may be somebody who's been a working photographer but wants to challenge your creative vision, your technical skills and um, evolve your understanding of the industry. You may even be changing career path but have a strong visual direction and portfolio. What we're looking for is evidence of talent, of passion, and the ability to thrive within a postgraduate level master's program. The structure of the MA across the 15 months is broken down into five units in total. So one of them, and I, I think the girls, I think Rosie and Nikki will agree, currently commercial photography and practice, the first unit that the students encounter is perhaps the most intensive. So this is where the students hone their image making skills and develop a style as a commercial photographer. It provides you with a robust theoretical and practical framework for the research and production of a short series of images on a chosen theme. The students research um, idea generation, um, picture research, the role of text and picture editing as well for different iterations of commercial practice. So we train the students during this unit, which lasts through almost two terms to work to deadlines, short deadlines, um, usually two weeks at a time, sometimes a little bit longer, in a creative and highly personalized way, whilst immersing the students in a, ver in a variety of different areas of the industry. So as well as having the briefs to respond to, the students also have intensive and varied technical workshops. And we run alongside this, a visiting speaker and industry um, visit program. We also support the students with one-to-one -one tutorials in each term, helping them work towards the final submission for this unit. So alongside unit one, there's a slightly shorter unit, which runs um, just up to Christmas and a little bit beyond it, called Histories and Commercial Photographic Practices. So this particular unit positions contemporary commercial practice within various historical contexts throughout, through an analysis of significant photographers, movements and agencies. So in this unit, the students explore the conceptual, philosophical and contemporary critical debates that surround image making. There are also some visits to exhibitions during this unit. And then unit three, 
which the students are just finishing actually tomorrow with the opening of a show that showcases the work that they've made. So the collaborative unit is a college wide unit and it's designed to enable students to identify, form and develop collaborative working relationships with a range of potential partners. So this year, the students had the option of um, working in small groups to respond to briefs from the DNAD New Blood Awards. And to also, if they chose, um, to respond to a national live brief created by Historic England and Photo Works, which aimed to document the, Brit uh, the English high street at this particular moment in time. So that particular group have ended up creating a 120 page perfectly bound book in collaboration with a design student from LCC. And that book is going to be launched tomorrow evening at the university in a public facing book launch alongside a public facing exhibition of the DNAD New Blood Award brief responses. So every year there'll be different options, but that's the, that's what the students have had this year. Then the fourth unit, which launched today, is the Professional Identities and Portfolio Development Unit. So in Unit 1, you've kind of found your visual voice by responding to briefs and learning how to work to a deadline. In Unit 4, we take things further by helping you develop a portfolio that speaks to your visual voice, speaks to your visual language, who you are as a photographer. So the emphasis is on coming out of this unit, which ends just before summer, with a portfolio that's ready to go to industry. So we expect it to include some of the strongest work that you may have already been making alongside new work that you create during this unit that builds upon your voice and helps you find your strengths as a photographer. You also, um, during this unit, learn all about business and marketing. And you come out of it with, the, with a website, your social media, ready to go to industry as well. And you examine your place within the industry. So. Um, not only will you kind of look at how you can operate as a freelance practitioner, but you'll examine contemporary practices, trends and media convergence within commercial photography and how that relates to you and what your place is within that. And then the final major project, which launches just after the Easter break. So in tandem to uh, Unit 4 Professional Identities, the final major project is the chance to work on a significant body of work. So it's the chance to create a substantial self-initiated project synthesizing your skills, knowledge and understanding while supporting you to develop a substantial professional portfolio to demonstrate your practice as you develop your future career. So those five units together look a little bit like this, which probably looks like gobbledygook to you guys, but trust me, it makes sense pretty quickly if you come to join the course. So we have in green on the top line, commercial photography and practice. That's the unit where you learn how to respond to briefs and find your visual voice. So that runs from the start of October through to just before Easter when you submit for that unit. In tandem, we have histories and theories of commercial photographic practices, which next year will finish just before Christmas. Then after Christmas, alongside commercial photography and practice, you start the collaborative unit, which will have options, probably not too dissimilar to what you've just seen, but they are options that you can choose from to work in a collaborative group to achieve an outcome. Then just before the Easter break, professional identities and portfolio developments begin, which is where you work on building your industry facing portfolio full of probably short form projects that collectively showcase who you are to industry. In tandem to that, you work on the major project, which is mandatory in this third year. And that starts just after Easter and runs all the way to the summer break. We expect you to work on it over summer. And then you come back in October and that finishes with submission in early December. So these are some of the questions that crop up in terms of postgraduate level study. So what are the contact hours? So at postgraduate level, you can expect seminars, workshops, lectures, tutorials, visits, etc. generally across um, two to three days of the week. So we also offer language development classes every week. I think there's a three hour session every week that you can take advantage of if you feel the need. Um, we also have a program wide industry talks program 
that happens currently on a Wednesday evening, as well as sign up workshops across the department and across the university in general. So whilst there is contact hours of across two to three days, there are many other things that you can do. We also say that um, you should be investing 40 hours a week into your MA. So not only with contact hours, but also in terms of your own study, your own realization of projects, it should be coming up to 40 hours a week. The cohort currently, a typical size, I mean, we have 38 students at the moment. We're hoping for 30 to 35 next year. Can I work alongside study? So this is definitely a question for Nikki and Rosie, and perhaps you can speak about this at the end, girls. So absolutely, you can. And one of the many um, skills to have as a freelance photographer is to be able to time manage and to work to various deadlines and to manage lots of different things at the same time. So I would say that it's actually quite important that you work alongside study, but you need to make sure that whatever you do doesn't impact on your MA. You need to be working towards that 40 hour a week mark. So part-time work would be appropriate. What's the balance of theory and practice? It's around 30% theory and 70% practice for this course. In terms of how you can prepare for the course. So what we ask in terms of submission um, for your application is a portfolio of images. So showing us your strongest work so we can see the potential there for a visual uh, for a, a unique vision um also we ask for a personal statement you know tell us about who you are why you want to be here um, we also ask for a video where you discuss why you are applying for the course and what you hope to achieve by the end of it we find this a valuable indicator as to whether you are the right sort of student for us and whether this is the right sort of course for you if anyone has any questions about application we can talk more about that at the end so the facilities at LCC, we have, I mean, there's, there's numerous, again, Ricky, um, Nikki and Rosie can talk about these, but we have a 3D workshop. We have a creative technology lab. We have an amazing canteen um, with lots of different types of food options, and it's really good. Um, and the Typo Cafe, where I am far too often. We have the college shop, the digital space, um, where you can go and get advice on moving image editing, um, they're also going to offer next year sign up Adobe Premiere accreditation courses and Adobe Photoshop accreditation courses for you to sign up to. Um, we have amazing gallery spaces, for example, the Well Gallery, where we're having our showcase tomorrow evening. The Kit Room, where you can borrow lots and lots of amazing high-end kit, digital and analog. We have the library and we have our own dedicated librarian there who can help you in terms of research for your for your submissions and just for your own practice in general we have photography studios obviously we also have the print at printing and finishing departments where you can go and learn all about reaper graphics so that's more like digital printing and then we have um amazing printing machines where you can print off books and zines um we have a printmaking department and we have the place now nikki rosie what's the place I've never heard of that. I'm going to bring you in. The place is a new one to me as well, Rachel. Actually, I'm not <laughs> sure. Do you know is that one? I actually, I can't. I can't pinpoint what the place is at the moment. What is it? <laughs> I think it's been it's been added to the list. But maybe the place is a new place that's going to exist when uh, you guys join next year. We'll find out for you. Mm -hmm. And then we have course specific facilities. So within the photography department, we have four photography studios that are set up for still and moving image. We have location lighting kits um, within the studios. You can also take location lighting kits out from the kit room. We have black and white and color film processing on site. So you can have your films processed or you can learn to process them yourself. We have a color dark room. We have black and white dark rooms. We have high-end neg scanning, which is amazing. We have a digital post-production suite, a digital C-type printing, which is just beginning actually um, in the next few weeks. We have professional inkjet printing on site too. And you can work with a technician to get your outputs to the point that you want them to be. You can also do inductions where you learn how to use all of this kit as well. We've just invested in a lot of new camera equipment. So we've got some Sony A7 IVs, 
So we have the Hasselblad 907X, Canon R5Cs with a, ra a range of lenses, the Fuji GFXs, which I can attest to as being the only thing that took me from shooting film to digital. They are incredible and you can take them out on location. Um, we have Sony FE 35mm lenses and then a number of other lenses here that work um, It's medium format, large format and 35mm. We've also invested in some new lighting equipment. So we have Hive, Hive Super Hornets, the ARRI LC series, the Profoto B10 Pluses and the Profoto A10s. Again, especially with the Profotos, you can hire from the kit room and take out with you. In terms of software, so we, we are excitingly able to offer Capture One for free and then um, we have just actually partnered with them. So Rosie, Nikki, you don't know if this yet, but Capture One are giving a live brief for Unit 4 Professional Identities and hopefully that partnership will just grow and grow as this course develops. We also can offer the Adobe Creative Cloud for £47 a year. That's pretty much what I pay a month, so make use of that. Um, you also get a free Cargo Collective website as part of your studentship. Some of the people who teach on the course, so this is me, um, uh, uh, you can sometimes find me as a clown, apparently. Um, so I am a, a commercial and fine art photographer. I was photo director at Harper's Bazaar UK for almost eight years. Pre that, I was Tim Walker's studio manager for two and a half years. And before that, worked at British Vogue on the pitch desk and also for Stephen Klein. So I have a lot of um, industry experience, both as a, an image maker and as a commissioner. We have Cheryl Newman, who is an incredible artist and curator, and she used to be the photo director of The Telegraph magazine. She's the reason why I got into pitch directing, so we're very, very lucky to have Cheryl. We have Thomas Bryant, who's an alumni of UAL. He actually did an MA in photography here, and he's an incredible photographer and a director of commercials. We have Katja Meyer, who, again, amazing photographer, amazing retoucher. Katja has incredible skills and is very generous with her advice in terms of the industry. She just did a pricing and production workshop with MACP this afternoon. We have Rosie Wadey, who is an agent, a photo agent, and she just has just founded an incredible photo agency with a very ethical um, ethos called Companion. We have Nico Froelich, who is an amazing portrait and documentary commercial photographer and really great at marketing himself on social media. So Nico has just worked with MACP on the Picture in High Streets project. We have Adrian Mott, who's an amazing commercial photographer. He's been practicing for 20 odd years. He actually um, did the, taught the PG postgraduate diploma in photography here for almost 20 years too. And he's incredibly knowledgeable technically. And then we have Victoria Ahrens, who's an artist photographer, and she teaches the Histories and Theories unit. We're extremely connected to industry. So the course has really strong links which give students unrivaled access to facilities in London. You will be working with people from industry, as I've just shown you, most of us are practicing photographers and industry folk rather than just theorists or fine artists. We wear many hats. Um, I also bring in a lot of people to give talks and to kind of uh, come in on an ad hoc basis to meet with students, to give talks about their practice, to talk about how they function within industry. So these are just some of the names of people who are friends of the course. So we had uh, Jack Davison give a talk, Cal Peschler Sigra at his exhibition recently, Andy Greenacre, the current photo director of the Telegraph magazine has given a talk. Tim Flack, who is um, a very renowned commercial photographer and the president of the Association of Photography is um, a dear friend of the course. Paul Zach, a still life photographer, Joanna Coates, a portrait photographer um, with, a, with a real kind of social ethos and political ethos. Silvana Travali, who's um, an alumni of Huddersfield University, where I used to teach, and uh, she's now obviously, I mean, if you if you haven't heard of her, please look her up. She's doing incredible things for British Vogue and Italian Vogue. Um, David Stewart, the renowned um, portrait photographer who, and commercial photographer from Wren Agency, who are also my agents. So they let us in and we looked through all the portfolios. And as you can see from that picture, David gave everybody a book. I can't promise that will happen every year, but hopefully. Um, we also go along to 
see a lot of exhibitions. So we've had Magnum photos, like the students into the print room there. Uh, the students went to see Richard Moss as part of the Hit Histories and Theories unit, also the V&A Museum. Um, we went to the Photographer's Gallery to see Chris Killip and had a tour by the curator, Tracy uh, Marshall Grant. The Photographer's Gallery are also showcasing the students picture in high streets work and 28 of the students are projecting their photographs on the outside of the building from the 22nd of March. Uh, we've had a, an internal tour of Metro where which um, is a renowned lab so seeing all the different printing processes that are possible there and then we had a, um, a gallery tour of Tyler Mitchell's recent show at the Gagosian. These are just a few of the things that we've done. We've actually done a lot more than this but I could be talking here all night if we went through that. So some examples of the students work. So Ayushi Tanawa shot this as one of the briefs during unit one, which was actually um, a self-portrait brief. And she chose to depict some of herself through these still lives. And as a result, the East India Company are keen to commission her. Simran Zanu shot these images. Um, one was for a brief from unit one and the other was for picturing high streets and photo vogue showcased both of these images. We then did a live brief uh, with a political activist called Hannah Bourne Taylor, who is advocating to save the swift, which is um, a British bird that's currently on the red list for extinction. So this was obviously a, a little bit of an unusual brief for MA commercial photography, but what I like to do is to challenge photographers to go outside of their comfort zone and Hannah wanted um, a group of students to come along and to document her protest which took place um, from speaker's corner and she um, was almost naked as you can see here but painted head to toe in swift and the students followed her on this protest from speaker's corner to downing street and it was an incredible experience which then resulted in a pop-up show. So Hannah, after the documentation that the students did of her, decided to give them a live brief to create work that showcased how they feel about the climate crisis. And the university has a, um, a, a real kind of ethos on social and political activism in terms of raising awareness, particularly about the climate crisis. So we decided to challenge MA commercial photography to make work about this. And we had a pop-up show just before Christmas. So this is one of the posters that Nikki actually designed. And this is another one. The show became a sky without birds. And here are some of the ones here. And these are some samples of the work created. So, you know, there's, I think this misconception that commercial photography is supposed to be purely technical without thought, that's absolutely not what we're going for here. Everybody who comes through this course needs to have and to come out with a vision and a mind of their own and an ability to speak about the world around them through image making. There's some more. We also have students who work with digital and students who work with analog techniques and both are encouraged. This was Kayao's response to uh, the climate crisis. And then these are some pictures from our pop-up show before Christmas. The students had 72 hours to turn this show around. In fact, I think it was less, I think it was 48. And then we have lovely Tim Flack there who came in to give a talk. And we also had portfolio reviews about the work with a number of industry professionals. So picture in high streets, which is the next big thing. So for our book launch that's happening tomorrow evening. So again, the students have been tasked with a really quick turnaround on a show. So this week, in fact, gosh, Nikki Rosie, did I give you seven days for this? I think it was less. I think you've had five days to pull this together. So again, um, Nikki has designed a poster here. Nikki did the DNA D ones and another student, Kajal, designed the North and South poster for the book. And this opens tomorrow. So it's really important that through this course, the students are tasked and challenged with not only creating work, but creating the output and the showcase of the work that they've made. This is the front and the back book cover. Some of the images from within the book.
And through this process, particularly with these ones, the students learn all about um, model releases. So because this is a, a national, well, a national call out that is going to have, um, it's going to be an archive that's kept for years to come. It's, it was a directive of Picture in High Streets that anybody featured within the project had to sign a model release. So the, the photographers involved, Simran and Vil here, had to have each person sign a model release to enable them to use the work. So learning all about model releases and also property releases are really important things to learn as commercial photographers. And we, we definitely instill that knowledge during this course. Here are some more examples of picturing high streets, some by Nikki there. So you'll see every student has had their own visual response to the same brief. And that's what's so exciting about this course. We have 38 photographers currently and everybody is so, so different and so unique in how they approach things. And that's what sets you apart in industry. So as well as the course, there's the postgraduate hub. So the hub is designed to provide information to students transitioning into their MA course to provide careers and employment advice for existing students and to provide ongoing teaching and learning support and guidance. There's also the industry mentoring scheme, which Rosie, I think you are a part of. Um, you can talk maybe about that in the Q&A section at the end. So our industry mentoring scheme connects postgraduate students of all disciplines with industry professionals to support their development as they enter the creative industry. So anybody in the university can apply to be a part of this scheme. I used to be a mentor on it for six years and I, it was incredible to have that interaction with students that was beyond the course. So if you can and you get you come to study here, I would highly recommend taking part in that scheme. And then to apply. So to make an application to the course, you'll need the following. You need to give us your personal details, obviously all GDPR compliant, um, current and previous education and qualification details, uh, some examples of your employment history, a CV, a personal statement, a portfolio of your strongest work and a video task, which is basically you talking about why you want to apply for the course and where you see yourself at the end of it. So we can work out if we're right for each other. So for more information on making an application and particularly your personal statement and portfolio, please visit the course page. Um, so if you Google MA Commercial Photography UAL, which is probably where you applied to join this session, um, there's more information there. The portfolio is, it would be good to see how your creativity has developed and to show your ability to work with different materials, themes and techniques, as well as how you research, develop and plan your ideas. But do make sure that it's your strongest work that you show. In the personal statement, tell us about your interests. Tell us about who you are and why you want to study MA Commercial Photography. In the video, again, same thing, but we would like to know about you, about why you want to join this course and about where you see yourself being at the end of it. So for any questions, um, hopefully you have some now. If you don't or if any come to you at a later date, my email is rachel.brown at lcc.arts.ac.uk. And then there's a few other general inquiries, accommodation, admissions, student support and scholarship and fee addresses there. So do take a screen grab and get in touch with the relevant area if you have any questions. So I'm here to ask you a couple of questions that we've had come in. Um, perhaps if we start with Nikki and Rosie, um, if you wouldn't mind telling us a little bit about your experience on the course. Mm -hmm. Don't to go first, <laughs> um, it's really, I think the main thing about it is um, how you really are encouraged to explore your specific style so it's a case of finding what that is and really exploring it with the help of the facilities and the tutors and then obviously that's taken through with the workshops and the one-to-ones and then even the theory side of it I think really supports it and that for me was something that I was really interested in to kind of have a, a theory-based um, opportunity to explore ideas which you do like with the histories and theories um, unit and the balance between that can be as much or as little. I mean, obviously you've got to submit the essay, but I think the opportunity for you to really delve into that is there as well. And 
same goes with the extra time that you want to dedicate to workshops as well because there's so many facilities that you can really can just really utilize mm-hmm. anything to add to that no i have to say it was really liked about the course so far that it's really linked with the industry like we always had those two week live briefs and then we were always going to those exhibitions so you kind of got um on the spot um inspiration and motivation as well to create your work and then you still had to work on something so it was not like you see something and then you let it sit for months but no you had to constantly create work and that also pushes you to develop new skills use all the facilities and yeah it's really fun it's really mm-hmm. interesting mm-hmm. it's been great so far it's been really full and you're constantly doing something and it's really varied and it's just stretching you and challenging you all the time so it's it's been really enjoyable yeah that's perfect um thank you for expanding on that a little bit um Rosie, if you wouldn't mind talking us through how you've been involved in the industry mentoring scheme, um, mm-hmm. please. We're, yeah, of course, we're both actually doing that and it's, it is a separate thing. There's, there's a lot of things within UAL as well for you to jump on if, you're, if you've got time. Um, we can talk about the working alongside um, the course as well, if that's um, interesting to some, some of you. But um, yeah, there's an opportunity for you to, to ap- apply to have a mentor and their 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 job really is to it's just an extension of their industry links and your development as a as a professional really so they'll be helping you with portfolios and um giving you insight from their perspective and i mean from my experience with who i've been linked with is a photo agent so she has a lot of experience with working in different agencies and working close with photographers, which, you know, that insight is really valuable on top of everything that you get on the course. So it is definitely an addition, but if you have the time, it, I would recommend it, yeah. I think. I don't know who you want. No, I can um, honestly say the same. I'm also with a photo agent. Um, and yeah, it's really interesting. It's, it can be a bit tricky as well because I get really honest opinions as well, but that also pushes you because you want to hear from the industry where you sit and where you got, can go with your work. And yeah, the only thing I would say, like when you get a mentor, think about the timing, because the course can be quite intense the first few months. So maybe push it towards, I don't know, but it's really something you should not miss out. It's really interesting. It's really, I don't know, it's amazing. Like I've never been that close to someone in the industry that can really give me feedback. So I do recommend. That's great, thank you. Um, and a final question for you, Nikki and Rosie. What are your plans after graduating? What would your ideal career look like? <laughs> um, so I'm already freelancing as photographer. So ideally, I want to continue that, but um, take it to different levels, like have an idea how I can actually succeed in the industry and yeah like where exactly i'm gonna head that's something i will find out the next few months i hope Mm -hmm. but yeah definitely want to stay in the industry yeah i I think for me um my background was in fine art so this was a um i think as well that that point of there's a a really big variation of people on the course there's there's people from loads of different kinds of backgrounds and levels of how much they've been involved in photography like with me you come with like an idea and obviously like you kind of it's I think it's open to lots of different kinds of people in that way some people that maybe have a lot less experience in photography and then people who have considerably more it's still suitable across the board for like both of those kind of people really um so coming from the background I have it was the industry side of it was really important and I think that it's really opened a lot of Kind of thought around what's possible it's not you know there's so many different routes you can take and i think art direction as well is something that i've been introduced to while i've been doing it and that's something that's a big part of the kind of the photography world and you know you could go into create and then there's just so many different avenues you can take it so as well as building up your confidence to be a freelancer you're being kind of exposed to the different routes you can take to your photography which i think is really like it's really really helped formulate that not really sure right now but it's still I think everyone's on a journey of getting to a point of knowing where they could fit in and 
it's definitely giving you all the tools to approach that. And I think what we've also learned is that after we graduate, we don't have to be the full on professional photographer yet. It's a journey we're going to live through. So we may start as freelance photographers, but then become mm -hmm. art directors or something. Mm -hmm. I found that really interesting, getting this insight from industry professionals, how they came to their spots where they currently mm -hmm. are. And mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah, the tutors that we've had are all so inspiring. Like Rachel, I have to give a, a shout out to how great the course leader is <laughs> and how the, the variety of different tutors we get are, you know, they're really, they're really um, specialised in areas and that just gives you an overall really detailed picture of what's possible really. And an honest picture as well, mm. which is very, very, very valuable, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's great. Thank you for going into detail with that. Um, it does take a bit of time to figure out exactly what you want to do. So that was a difficult question to answer. So thank you. <laughs> um, Rachel, we've had a question um, about portfolios. Um, what would a great portfolio look like um, for you to receive? So in unit four, we go through that. No, I really um, So I would suggest. Um, about 20 images is ideal we can get a really good sense of somebody and their vision and their talent and their passion from that number of images um yeah I would say 20 is a good concise number um Nikki Rosie obviously I hadn't I wasn't on board when you guys applied but maybe you can say when you applied how big your portfolios were mm -hmm. I think 20 mm -hmm. sounds like 20 to 25 it was yeah. something around those um those lines but it is just always the case of the best like you what you feel is something that demonstrates your style and is of the best quality that you've got so far and just something that you have a lot to talk about as well because if you were to be it's something you can refer to in the video that you make and then if there was an interview you know you can sit there and be quite confident to go into detail on that specific project but I would also say maybe diversity because I work in different fields and I have experience in different fields. So I try to show every area I do the best images out of it. But mm -hmm. I guess every journey is unique. So like it's Rachel. true that <laughs> yes, it's true that it shouldn't be twenty images that are all completely different, as in from different projects. So I would suggest maybe three or four different projects within that twenty, so we can see how you formulate your ideas. But again, if you've done two and there's maybe 10 images that expand a project, that's absolutely fine as well. What we want to see is your strongest work. Perfect. Thanks, Rachel. Um, and then in regards to lectures, um, just a couple of questions. Will they all be in person and will they all be on site or will any be on uh, different locations or things like that? A good question um so obviously post uh covid we are we have done this entire year in person so the last two terms have been completely in person um occasionally if somebody's unwell like myself when i had covid <laughs> i delivered the class um online so there is that option but we very much prefer in person at this point in time the um lecture series that currently happens on a wednesday evening that is cross-departmental so across all the photography courses on um that, are, that exist you can join it remotely um lectures off-site so in the industry visits program that happens predominantly during unit one um so in the run-up to christmas we visited places so we we had the majority off-site and actually we have a few more off-site ones coming up during unit four where we go to people's businesses, their studios, um, to a print room, for example, the Magnum one. Um, we're going to Tim Flack's studio next term. So it's really a mixture. And I think it keeps things dynamic. And it, it's helpful in understanding industry when you actually go and see it in person and how it functions. So we had a talk for it that really comes to mind at Paul Zach's studio. He's an incredible still life photographer that I used to commission a lot for Harper's Bazaar. And he was so generous, he'd never given a talk before, but he put this this thing together. And I mean, Nikki, Rosie, maybe you can remember, but it was so generous. 
and he also got out all of his old transparencies and the students could go through them and look and see how that technology existed and how and just how it was at that point in time and then learn from him how the technology has evolved through to now and he did a live demo of a set that he was doing for a, for a famous magazine so it's very much a mixture but predominantly in person perfect thank you um and then another question about portfolios um, in regards to annotations around the portfolio how in depth um, do they need to be so uh, if you're showing research to back up the images that you're sending to us we need to understand what that research means um, so I would say that you need to make sure it's understandable to a stranger which obviously for now I am and uh, you know other people will be going through these applications as well I do it in partnership with with somebody um, so just make sure that you're explaining you don't have to go too far in depth because you know you could write an essay I'm sure for each annotation but keep it succinct but please keep it understandable what we're interested in more are your final images that you've made for something seeing the research is great but it's more the final images that you've created that you should be focusing on. I hope that answers that question. Yes, I think that does cover that perfectly. Thank you. Um, and then one final question for the evening. Is there anywhere to see student work on the website or on social media? Yeah. So I'm really pleased you just asked that because we've just updated the um, course page on the UAL website. So if you go on to the UAL commercial photography, MA commercial photography um, page, there's a student work section that's just gone live. So you can see the students work there. There's also um, an Instagram account that runs across the photography department called um, is it LCC London Photo. Nikki Rosie, can you remember? Yeah. I think it is LCC London Photo. So that that Instagram account showcases departmentally but there's some of MA commercial photography on there and we'll use it tomorrow night with the showcase that happens um, and the book launch that happens. So if you follow it, you'll see imagery on there as well. Thank you. Thank you, Nikki. Thank you, Rosie, for joining. Thank you, everybody who I cannot see for joining. Um, I look forward to receiving your application. Um, and yeah, just if anyone has any questions that didn't come to mind now, that comes to you tomorrow, I believe the deadline for applying is the 3rd of April, so you're more than welcome to reach out to me directly um, in the run-up to that application deadline. And yeah, hopefully we'll see you soon.